Hi, my name is John Snape, and I'm putting together this little demo of Visual Basic Programming for a course that's going to show up on Educator.com real soon. And I want to go through and show you a very simple technique you can do to create a web browser in Visual Basic that has a lot of the functionality that you can use in a web browser. So let me open up our Visual Studio. Now you can use uh, the Express version, you can use 2008, 2005. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and use 2010 Professional because that's the version that I have. Don't worry if you don't have this version. Uh, the Express version of 2010 works just as well and it's free. So let's create a new project. We're going to create a Visual Basic Windows, Windows Form application. So let's go ahead and call this Web Browser and we'll click OK. Now here is our form here. Let me go ahead and go to the, the, the properties here. If your properties aren't here, you can go ahead and um, uh, go to the view and then go to the properties window and it will show up over here. So I'm going to click on the form and I'm going to go ahead and put here, I'm going to put Web Browser and Visual Basic, so it gives us a name here. And I'm going to expand this out a little, make it a little bit bigger for us to work with. Now I'm only going to be um, uh, opening our, our toolbox just long enough to put the controls on here, and then we're going to close it. So let me go ahead and see, I don't have the toolbox listed here, so let me go to View, Toolbox, and then you can see that it's uh, pin down here. If your toolbox is on the side over here, you can just hover over it and then come over here and pin it down over here. So let me go ahead and uh, uh, move this over a little so I have space here. And there's just a few things I want to put onto this this form. I'm going to grab a tool strip container and then I'm going to dock fill to form. I'm going to grab a tool strip and drop it up here. And I'm also going to grab this web browser and drop it down here. And you can see that it fills it up automatically. So that's all the controls that I need for this. So I'm going to go ahead and hide that. And I'm going to make my properties window a little bit bigger. And I can go ahead and make this even bigger. And I'm going to make this here smaller so we can see it all on the screen. So I'm going to click here, and this is our web browser. So I'm just going to put web box. I'll just name it web box. And then up here, I'm going to add a button and another button. And then I'll add a combo box, which we'll use to type in our address. This will be our back and our forward. And then I'm going to add a couple more buttons. It's going to be our go and our stop. So let me click up here a little bit out of the way of everything. And I'm going to go ahead and choose the render mode of system, and then I'm going to hide that little grab bar that normally shows up on the on the edge of the um, the tool strip. So let me click on the first button, and I'm going to go ahead and put uh, BTN back, and that's going to be our back button. And I need to give it a bitmap now. Uh, Visual Studio comes with a lot of uh, buttons that you can use and it's in the Visual Studio 2010 image library. If you're trying to find that, go ahead and um, uh, do a search on your computer for this VS 2010 image library, all one word, and you should find it as a zip file on your computer, on your C drive after you've installed Visual Studio 2010. If not, you can do a search online and find it. So the buttons that we're going to need, we're going to need the uh, go to next and go to previous. I'm just holding down the control key as I select them. And we also need the play button. I'll hold down the control key and select that. And we also need the stop button. So I'll go ahead and hold down the control key and select that. So I have stop, go to next, go to previous, and play all selected. So I'll go ahead and open those. Now this is the back button, so I want it to go to previous, and I'll click OK. And you can see that uh, this button has, all these buttons, when I brought them in originally, 
they had a magenta background but uh, because we're using the image that came with Visual Studio it knows that the transparent color is magenta automatically that's why we don't see the magenta around the arrow and then I'm just going to go ahead and put here on the tooltip text go back and I'll select the next one and this one is going to be go forward so I'll change the tooltip text there, and then I'll go ahead and change the the button here to go to next. And I'll click OK, and you can see it fills it in nicely. And then I'm going to change the name to BTN uh, Next. So this will be go back, BTN back, BTN Next. And I'm going to go ahead and click on this combo box, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the size of it I'll change the width to say 400. Actually, I can actually make it 500, and that way we got plenty of space to type in our web addresses. Now I'm going to go to this button here, and this button is actually going to be our uh, BTN Go. That's just the name. That's how we refer to it in code. And then I'll come down here and I'll put Go, the little exclamation point. And let me choose what button it's going to be. It's going to be the play button. So now we're almost finished with setting up our interface. And then we'll go through and set up our, um, our, uh, our code after we've got all the interface set up. So we have BTN stop. So now we have all of our code. But if we let's go ahead and save it, if we run it, it doesn't do anything. You see, it doesn't go anywhere. It doesn't do anything. We don't have anything to to do here. So now we need to add code. And the code is actually probably one of the easiest parts of this whole thing. We're just going to go to the first button and double click it. I will double click the next button. Then we'll double click the next button and then we'll double click the last button. So in our button back we basically have our web box go back and then now that I'm here I'm just going to hit the down arrow key and it will add in the two parentheses that we need automatically. And Then I'll click down here and I'll go web box go forward and again I'll hit the down arrow key it'll fill that one in then we have web box dot stop. Now those are the three simple ones. We have one, two, and three finished. And this is the last one. And this one is going to be a little bit more involved. It's the go button. And what we want to do, we want to first check and make sure that there's nothing, uh, make sure there's actually something in our combo box, which is this here. We want to make sure there's something in there. And let me just change this to web combo so it's easier to, to uh, access in code. And then uh, what we're going to do is if, and we're going to put not web combo dot text equals nothing, then, and you can see we already have the automatic end if. So if if web combo is not nothing, then we want to navigate to to that location. So if we actually type in an address, we want to navigate to that location. And then we want to add in whatever this this value was. Whatever website we typed in, we want to add it to the combo box so then we can access it later. So what we're going to do, we'll put our web combo. We're going to add in the exact same thing. So now we've added it to our combo box. So if we want to access it again, we just select it from the combo box and it will automatically select it. Now uh, we don't want to have like 3,000 entries in our combo box, so what we're going to do, we're going to ch check and make sure 
if it's greater than 20, if the number of items in there is greater than 20, then what we want to do, we want to remove the first item. So we'll go ahead and So it'll remove the first item, which always starts at zero. So there's our web browser. It's actually finished now. We can run it now. And we'll put in here and we'll hit the go and it will load up the uh, Microsoft website. At least it should. And it's, I expanded full screen so you can see the, the full screen here. And you can see the Microsoft website is there. And let's put in here, let's put in my, my uh, photography website. We'll hit go. And you can see I'm still logged in in my um, WordPress account here because this is just the regular web browser. This is just like Internet Explorer. And you can see I have the whole website available here, but I also have other values here that I can access. So let me go ahead and choose Microsoft and we'll hit go. And you can see that uh, uh, there it is right there. And then just let me hit go a whole bunch of times. And now we have a whole big long list. And let me choose mine a whole bunch of times. So now you can see we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. So we have 20 of them here. So if I keep hitting this, you can see that it, it fills out the thing and it doesn't go over 20. So that succeeded also. So there is our web browser in Visual Basic. You can see it's actually pretty simple. Um, pretty soon the course for Visual Basic will be up on the educator.com website and I hope you take the course. It's going to be a lot of fun and hopefully we'll see you there. Thank you.